the heroes put the question to the tiefling known as Sinemi. She was a wanted criminal in Absalom, and now imprisoned by Eurevian for failing in her task to capture and return with Carmen Rajani. The why was unknown, but the heroes opted not to trust her at her word, and shackled her once more until they had time to deal with her. The deep gnome, Glash Tramdur, joined them in their fight as thanks for saving his life, and hoping to find a way into the dark lands and to his home. Pressing on, the heroes found a room that is empty, save for doors in every direction, and a strange glowing light at the center of the ceiling. Izori, touching the light, accidentally set off an alarm and a trap that attempted to paralyze them all for capture. That was when the southern door opened and two flesh warps stepped through. A Mulvan talk and an unfamiliar misshapen humanoid. The latter recognized what could only be a chance of escape and turned on its comrades. Barking words of rebellion at a final looming creature. A devilish construct of twisted metal known as a Levaloch. This betrayer helped the heroes and itself in striking down these foes. Could this lump of a creature be yet another ally or enemy? Hello there, creatures and denizens of the North. James here with a favor to ask of you. We want you to go out and tell a friend about one of our shows. Word of mouth is so important for a burgeoning network like ours, and each and every one of you can help us grow just by mentioning one of our shows to a friend, a game master, or someone on the street with a cool shirt. We'd also like to remind you that we've got a free public Discord where some of our most dedicated fans hang out at unchartednorth.com backslash Discord, and we'd love to hear from you. And if you really like what we do, you can help us create these shows and get some cool rewards in the process at patreon.com backslash unchartednorth. That's it. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. By the time today's episode reaches the airwaves, uh, it will have already been discussed in the Discord. However, we've not you've yet to do it on air, and especially in character, let's address the elephant in the room. Cam's joined us. Is that because I'm huge? Hey, 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 hey. hey. What? <laughs> <laughs> Because you're a Republican. <laughs> I'm what? <laughs> One of those things is more offensive. You know what? I, yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Damn, dunk. Self I, burn followed up, followed up by a dunk burn. I mean, uh, honestly, it's better than calling camera, me a liberal. So. And, so. and those we are laughed himself to frozen. Gunshots uh, <laughs> ringing out all the way from <laughs> Teos. Oh, wait, I Damn, think I hear some. No, I'm just kidding. Good. It's not really like good. that out here. Um, Cam, welcome <laughs> yes. to the show. How excited to have you. Me. Oh, I'm I'm excited to be here. Anyone else excited, or you just no. kind of passe about it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty mid. <laughs> yeah, you are pretty mid, mid Scott. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Jogi aside, I am very excited for Cam uh, to be joining us and bringing a fun new character in the mix. 
Yeah, something uh, on the darker side of things, that's for sure. <laughs> I'd be more excited if they didn't have mouths for eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> come on. It's uh, pretty unnerving. Pretty yeah, unnerving. Yeah, that always gets me in a way that I'm that just makes me super uncomfortable. I really mm. don't care for it. Teeth are weird already, and to put them <laughs> in different spots makes them extra weird for me. No, oh, James, just wait till they start eating. Just wait till they start eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also interested to see how Min Maxi Cam is going on this because they are known to be uh, a filthy Min Maxer. Yeah, munchkin? filthy, filthy Munchkin Min Maxer. I'm born in the War Priest, so <laughs> not that Min Max. Uh, playing one of the uh, least favorite builds, uh, or uh, c- uh, I guess uh, class types, yeah. uh, according to the community, but. Uh, Certainly making the most of it, <laughs> as far as I can tell already. Yeah, that was that that character was just a beast in that fight. I mm. I'm very impressed at the the war priest you managed to put together. Because the one I managed to put together at third level was just fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you basically build a war priest like a paladin, but with a little bit more spells, and that's basically how right. you build a war priest. Like, you want strength, con, and charisma, and then you get the heaviest armor and the shield that you can get. Yeah, I didn't go with the heavy armor, and that's always a mistake because there's this thing in my head still, and I don't know how long it's going to live there, but you can't cast spells and armor, and that's it, it just keeps preventing, like, like pressing down. Like, there's no fucking reason Azori is in uh, Explorer's clothing and not in, like, hide armor, other than the fact that when I was building her, I went, oh, you can't cast spells and armor. You got the the, the spell casting penalty, but no, right. <laughs> that's the wrong addition. Yeah, and that was only for arcane spells. Divine spells didn't ever have that. Yeah, that's true. In any case, uh, Cam could be playing uh, a mime, and it would probably be beneficial to the party because y'all been three for a while, <laughs> and it's been rough lately. Uh, so I think uh, I think whatever Cam brings to the table here is going to be pretty fun. Uh, regardless, I think that was Freeman oh, saying he wished I didn't speak. Yeah, it would make uh, editing and easier. also it was a backhanded compliment because really it's just less work for Freeman having to change the uh, encounter levels. So that 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 was going to be my next point is that Cam joined us on the heels of Freeman's tirade about how difficult it is to to balance for three players. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, sort of. Uh, you guys were a level ahead and, and getting wiped out in two hits already. Anyway, I, I wasn't even balancing it. It was just it was just kicking your ass anyway because you were down a body. And there was nothing I could do, and, and like especially those single target target encounters, like the Urna curse. Holy shit! Um, oh yeah, that was that was brutal. And there's there was nothing really I could do about that that fight. Uh, it's already permanently frightened too. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely an inspiring moment to make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> having having Cam along for the ride is going to be a boon to all of us, but I think more so than that, it's going to be a boon to the listeners. Those those dulcet tones creeping into your ear holes every Monday. Oh baby, hello <laughs> listeners, <laughs> drink it in, baby. <laughs> oh man, people are gonna be having shivers as they're driving their car down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Where's the don't crash, stay in the lane. Bro. Stay in the lane. Oh. <laughs> um, the uh, regardless, we're very excited to have you, Cam. Can't wait for more of whatever the hell this thing is, <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to. I can't wait for you guys to role play and, and get into the dark side of things uh, of this character and the and the depths of this dungeon. Um, Speaking of fixing the encounters, let's let's roll in and fix these PCs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's just, it's just healing terrible. segue <laughs> all right, all right, quickly quickly everyone gather around gather around and you watch as their arm just opens up the muscle slides off to the side and they reach in and pull out a healer's kit who's first <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> izori steps up she's not afraid uh, yeah, I was just holding back a little bit of the, uh, but she's not the afraid. Net, but that's not strictly true because as soon as I missed this flavor, but as soon as the uh, level lock pulled out uh, a trident, a new trident, the previous one crumbled to a pile of rust. Uh, and then that happened a couple of times. And now that it's dead, the barbed net and the trident and its body just crumbles to rust. 
rust and shit, I believe, as Ru- rust and and leftover <laughs> shit from the uh, from and the she can still observer. move in the net. She just had true, a status true, penalty. True. Yeah. Um, but just want to throw it out there because if you try to take it off, I was I was gonna make you do more damage as well. But it does crumble mm-hmm. away. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so for my first roll. Uh, I roll a four for a 16 on the expert check, which is the DC 20. So everybody, uh, Kruka and Azori here for 20. Um, and while they do this, they're going to pull off their helmet and you just see like a few strands of clumped up hair left on top. And it's just greasy and absolutely awful. Like they haven't taken this helmet off in days. Uh, and then you watch as they like focus for a second while they're patching up your wounds and a small, uh, Aeon Stone pops out and starts rotating over their head. And it looks like you're <coughs> awesome. <laughs> and then Kindred spirits. Lump will look over at Tulak. Do, do you not have one of these? No. No, I do not have one of those. That, that's a shame. They're very popular yeah. and very useful. Doesn't fly that way. It's just it's like it's like the whole the whole staff thing. Just doesn't like the aesthetic, so <laughs> refuses to go with the mechanical uh, advantage. I said next time we're going into town, I was gonna get one. <laughs> That's true. You did say that. You did. <laughs> but I stick with the staff. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to do a couple more. Did, is, did Tulak get injured at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Time. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who are you, creature? What is your name? <laughs> uh, that'll feel Scott's for name is Pickup Line. <laughs> uh, they, they, they called me Lump. But what is your name? I I don't really remember before. I I have bits and pieces that come back to me at moments. I remember climbing out of a pile of corpses in a nation I don't recognize. And here's what I can tell you that you're in a dangerous place to the east over there and they'll point over at the doors. There's going to be another one, uh, another hallway, and it'll lead north uh, to an intersection. May, may I ask what your business is in here? To destroy Belcora. You watch as their eye smiles, and they give you two TP grins. Good, good. It is it is good to hear that. Um, may I ask your names? My name is Sage Tulak, and as Ori speaks correct, we are here to remove Belcora and Volok and all the other foul denizens of this place. And yes, sorry, this is Azori. <laughs> I figured yes. you would continue to say your full name there, not just leave me hanging. <laughs> 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 to put it simple, I am Azori. I was born in Azori Sahar, and now I've taken the name Azori Al Zayim Lansir. A pleasure. Even she has a hard time saying it. <laughs> I've never said it out loud before. <laughs> I think it goes without saying. I'm Kraka. <laughs> it, it did not. Thank you for saying it. Uh, Clash Dramdur. At your service. Oh, that was you. an amazing splash of acid there, Glass. I, I thank you for your assistance. Glash. 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 Uh, but thank you. And you watch as like a tongue pops out of one eye hole, like <laughs> eye hole and then out of the other eye hole, like trying to figure out how to say this right. <laughs> if I ever go too Did far. Does your voice echo? Uh, it doesn't echo, but it's in stereo. <laughs> All sounds are already in stereo. I know. <laughs> it's in there's a slight stereo. there's a slight millisecond <laughs> delay out of one mouth. No, I'm just right. Mm. Oh, I love it. Gross. I love the I, lo- I just love this little this weird conversation happening as you're like stitching everyone up. Um, did you heal uh, Tulak? Yeah, I healed for thirty and nineteen, and I Perfect. assume with like thirty minutes, everyone else with those Spinley is back up okay and so how much time was that in total uh 30 okay perfect but i i i can give you 
uh, some information. I've, I've been down here for... And you just see, like, a, a wave of sadness pass over their face. Even with all of the weirdness going on there, like, you can still recognize the slight, sl- uh, slight sag in the shoulders. And um, if there's anything I can do to be of more assistance... I've kind of um, turned in my two weeks, as it were. <laughs> well, why did you decide to do that today? How long have you been working for these people? I've been down here for a very long time. Did, did y'all come through the gauntlet? Yes. Yes, we did. Is that how oh, you got here? Yes. Uh, how are the kobolds doing? The kobolds were long gone by the time we arrived. Uh, we saw traces of their death I see through the spirits they were quite kind to me I think have you not been to the surface since then um no there there have been moments where I thought to escape but I feared recapture and I also feared how the surface would Look at me as I am now. Were you flesh warped here? And you see like a tear starting to form in their big eye before like kind of dropping down their chin as they just give a small nod. Tulak places a hand on the shoulder of this creature. A kind of against his natural instincts because this creature looks like something that usually would try to kill him and he would try to kill so yeah kind of, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's been the trend yes <laughs> as he raises his arm towards the shoulder it kind of you know shakes a little bit and he kind of pulls it back but then steals himself and puts it on his shoulder you don't have to worry if they are your enemy then you are our friend You can come with us. If you are scared to go to the surface, help us with your knowledge of this place. We look to rid it of evil. And clearly you are not that. And Tulak here has told me stories of their defeats of one Jaffaki, the being responsible for the flesh warping here. Perhaps you could take some small comfort in their demise. You see the corners of their eye crinkle. And, like, when Tulak reached out and, like, touched them, they, like, almost recoiled for a moment because nothing down here has touched them in a positive way, like, since they've been down here. For reference, too, you guys did your research on um, the town of Otari. The kobolds were ousted from Otari in the year 4310 by Makalani Menhimes. Um, it is now 4721. So it's been a very long time. The, I thought the kobolds had been driven out of Otari that long, but I thought that they were taken up in the gauntlet. That was why I went with that. Oh, um, there were still some underground ones. Yeah. Um, so I guess the point of reference is it's been... Uh, a cor- uh, the last time you knew the kobolds had taken up residence in Otari was something like three to four hundred years ago. That being said, there uh, there was some uh, news not that long ago, i.e. in the menace under Otari uh, at Beginner's Box, Spoilers. that uh, there were still some kobolds found underneath... Uh, yeah, spoilers. Uh, <laughs> uh, found underneath uh, Otari still. So you have a wide range of reference here. This lump has no idea how long it's been um, underground, but the cobalt is part of it, so it could be anywhere, uh, you know, between like the last few years or like decades or three or four hundred years ago. Okay, only I, only Cam knows the truth because I forget what the answer is. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's kind of a, a wide range, but but kind of gives you an idea of like how long they may have been down here um, without ever having been touched in a positive manner. <laughs> As Cam put it. Don't make it weird. Should we be <laughs> hanging out in this room for 30 minutes? No, I we would have I I'm assuming we would have popped off into like my boss's old room just to Sure, close yeah. The doors. Uh you guys could yeah, you guys move into that room if you like. Uh Lump would know that it's 
pretty it's basically secure so you get in and it's basically uh clearly an old prison block um but it's been turned into a makeshift barracks uh so there are uh some uh makeshift cots and some foot lockers and such so there's three along the western wall these little cells that are like they're actually chained open and then um various other goods laying around there is one single door uh to the um southwest of the room uh would i have known what was in there you uh, have only ever heard from the other denizens here that everyone believes uh, whatever's behind the door is, uh, is a haunted area. Uh, and I'll see like Azori looking over at the door. Um, be be careful. I've I've never looked myself, but uh, there are rumors that it is haunted behind that door. And with that, Tulok's ears perk up. And he says, haunted, you say? I should take a look. That's the rumor going at the, the water breaks. At the water breaks? <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe the vernacular has changed. So Tulak will try the door, uh, searching first if it's trapped or locked. Uh, yeah, you take a look at the door and uh, give it the old heave-ho in inspection. And um, you don't detect anything. Uh, it doesn't appear to be locked. Uh, he opens it. Can you crack a door and you can see that it's basically it looks like a small office that is full of uh, just like dirt and grime and cobwebs. And uh, it's like uh, 10 by 15. Uh, an old desk inside. That's it. It appears to be a small office. Many cobwebs. Spooky. And Tulak will step in. And he'll pull out that uh, wand that he has, the, like, magic missile machine gun. Uh, the, yeah, the manifold missiles. That's right. And then steps in. You step into the room, and you hear this frightful moan. It's just like, get out! And it, like, echoes in through your head. I need you to roll me a will save. 25. You take 45 mental Jesus. damage. Yo! And you immediately, without even thinking about it, just turn around and race out of the room. With, uh, with, uh, not of your own volition. So Tulak kind of races out, and then there is a little chest in front of him there. He keels over with a hand on the chest and just... <sighs> oh my god. <sighs> the... There's something in there. <sighs> so everyone heard the moan in the room, but only Tulak heard the get out. It it told me to get out. In my head. Oh, it hurt so bad. Shrek is going to look over like, well, that looks haunted, and start look, searching the walls or in here <laughs> for secret doors. <laughs> <laughs> and start searching the walls. Lump will look around at the group. Does he normally just do that after somebody warns him like it'd be like me saying there's a trap on this panel right here and then somebody stepping on it I don't think normally is a word you really want to work with <laughs> I, I see and Lump will like beckon to luck over and uh, just arm opens up again and uh, <laughs> begins treating those wounds <laughs> hold still He's checking his uh, checking his brain synapses for any damage. <laughs> Let's follow the tentacle. <laughs> this is not the first time we've run into a haunt here. Generally, I've had much success in releasing the spirits to the boneyard. We'll have to see what happens with this one. I see. We we could just leave it there. It doesn't seem to be in the way of anything. That's true, Krakka. If half of the stories you have told me are true, these haunts always seem to be guarding something of use. The the portrait you carry with you, Tulak. The, uh, that, that wand of fire suppression. Perhaps they, too, guard a treasure, but it is outside of my ability. Not only is that true, Azori, but also we must not forget about the spirits. And releasing them to the boneyard. 
They do not belong here. And that's what drives me. I want to make sure that they get the ending they deserve to their life cycle. This is just the beginning. A happy ending in the boneyard. Nothing belongs here. And she spits. You are uh, correct, Izori. Nothing belongs here. Uh, she pulls up her sleeve and her tat this this tattoo of a one of many um, begins to glow and this black cat pounces out of it Zamal <laughs> would you go check the the office and this black cat just trots over and into the office to, just to see what happens Zamal yeah <laughs> and this is the first time we've seen this cat correct yeah, you've like heard her talking to it over long rests and stuff like that, but it, it normally looks like she's talking to her wrist. Never get a tattoo when she pulls your up her sleeve, name. You actually see like, like a <laughs> bunch of different, uh, like the outline of animals up her arm. Interesting. And this is the latest, like it's the furthest down. Uh, while they're doing that, uh, Lump is going to put their shield on the ground and start etching into it a shape. But I want to know what happens to Samal. Uh, so you, you're sending you're sending your kitty cat in? Yeah. Well, not in, like into the door. Uh, so Samal, when I retrained uh, this morning, Sammy, uh, I gave I gave it the soul sight ability, so it has mm-hmm. life sense within thirty feet. Okay. So it's life sense. Okay. Uh, you only detect the life of your companions. Okay. Uh, it will trot in then. Uh, it trots in, and it's unmolested. No effects. Okay, it trots out, rubs up against Izori's leg, and uh, speaks with her, and she conveys to the rest of the party. Uh, it is an empty room for Sammy, so perhaps it only affects humanoids. I'm so, willing to check if you'd like. Just wait. I have one more thing I'd like to try first, but thank you. Um, I would like to try my new feat. Consult the spirits. Mm. So, uh-huh. when I... Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> when I chose this feat, I chose... Um, from nature occultism or religion and I chose occultism and so essentially what that does is is it allows me to contact lingering spirits psychic echoes of the departed dead and spirits from beyond reality who tell me about things like strange auras effects or the presence of unnatural occult beings so I have to spend 10 minutes and do an attempt a recall knowledge with the chosen skill the DC is set by the D- uh, by the GM, usually a very high DC for the level of the well, usually a very high DC for the level of the highest level creature you might encounter in the area. Okay, so varying degrees of success here. I'm going to start by doing a recall knowledge. Now, okay. Freeman. Also, I don't know how you all play this. Whether I can talk to spirits in this area about the spirit in the room. Or if this will call out the spirit in the room, that's up to you how you want to interpret that, okay? Okay. So 15 on the die for a 31. And I'm going to go with that. And you uh, contact nothing. No. So that's nothing. a failure? Uh, so I have a critical a success. Check? A success. Yeah, it's a recall knowledge. It's just technically a secret check, I think, because it's a recall knowledge, but... Yeah. Tricky okay. bastard. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know, frustrated. <laughs> sure is. Yes, and. Behind the scenes like show. Nova. Behind the scenes show. Behind the scenes show. More patrons. More patrons. <laughs> well, Kruk is not going fucking near that thing, stupefied, and I don't know why you are either, because Will saves are not too hot right now. Mm hmm. I mean, my soul plus 10. Mine's a 16. <laughs> okay, um, I guess Tulak will take a step back and say, well, 
I was really hoping that that would work, but I don't know. Kruk is going to sarcastically use follow the expert at him. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Lump will finish etching a symbol into their shield and pick it up and then go stand at the door to investigate swapping places with Tulak. And okay. Tulak allows Lump to pass. Be careful. And then Lump will step through the door. Sorry, is Lump undead? No. Lump steps through the door and is in an empty office. Uh, I'd like to make a perception check to see if I spot anything that may have... Because we heard the moan. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, you can roll a perception. Uh, you notice it's it's so full of cobwebs, it's really hard to make out, even though it's a small room, like any detail across the room. Um, so you know it's that you're kind of you're kind of struggling here with all the all the things in your way. Okay, uh, um, I will go ahead and shift my arm into a whip and just start wailing it through to knock off all the cobwebs. Okay, so you just like <laughs> your weird whip arm <laughs> yep. starts slapping the um, uh, the cobwebs down, and uh, you can you know you, they just they crumble. There's lots of dust uh, that's going into your mouth eye, uh, but you uh, clear the room reasonably well and do your best to take a little look around, but uh, you don't see much of anything. Okay. And Tulak just looks to see, did he set off some sort of trap or anything like that when he stepped into the room? Is there a press pressure plate or anything? Uh, not that you noticed, no. Lo- uh, I hate to call you Lump, but was there anything in the desk? Uh, no, I don't believe I searched the desk. I just looked around on the floor for anything that might be in here that caused that uh, visceral visceral of a reaction uh, I'll, I'll go back in and check and Lump will go back in and start poking around in the desk hmm. uh, yeah the desk appears to be uh, completely devoid of anything of value or use or anything at all really I don't like this <laughs> sometimes um, things just don't go your way. I thought you were going to say sometimes two eyes are better than one. Does someone else want to try? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Tulak, I want to roll like a recall. Can I roll a recall knowledge on Lump? Uh, yeah. Yeah, roll me an occultism. 33. I mean, your gut instinct is uh, what you were saying earlier. Normally, this is the sort of th- creature that would normally be trying to kill you and you it, especially recently. Uh, you're pretty sure that Lump is a flesh warp. Not undead. Not undead. Is there anything else that I would glean as if this was a enemy? Uh, uh, Lump would uh, be an aberration uh, as well as a humanoid. You could make a religion check to see what kind of cleric they are. That too? Yeah. 24. Uh, the symbol that they have etched onto their shield looks like a rapier uh, piercing like vertically through a rose uh, with wasps surrounding it. And uh, they are a follower of the last breath. Mm. Which is a pantheon of gods. Cool. All right. Well, with that in mind, he does not convey that awkwardly to his colleagues he just keeps that to himself and Krukka did some searching sorry did you turn anything up uh, you were searching the walls I saw Zori moving around the room as well like um, there was nothing to the, nothing for the walls I'll tell you that um, one of these days if one of you if you some of you spend a little bit of time searching like the beds and the foot lockers you scrounge together a measly 11 silver they, they don't really pay us we, we don't get a lot of money. I've had to hide most of this within myself after finding it in bits and pieces. Work is the real reward. So I don't know who wants to add the 11 silver to their uh, character sheet, but um, you would imagine like they're in foot lockers and stuff. So you imagine they're, they're more like keepsakes for the creatures in here rather than act- anything of actual value to them. Azori will take the 11 silver. 
She would. Yeah. Right. Follower of Rabidar. Of course she's going <laughs> to take the coin if nobody else wants it. I was just going to put it in the party loot, but you just hold on to it there. Well, the party loot's an Otari. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just it's skipping a caravan. step. Don't metagame. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Somebody has to carry that Cheat. bulk. Anyways. Cheating the system. All right. If everyone's uh, prepared, I, I propose we keep this... Um, th- is keep it pushing still a phrase? I don't think it ever was. Keep this party moving? Oh, because we're a party of people and we need to move. Yes, yes, yes. We'll keep this party moving. <laughs> this caravan's a rocking. Tulak opens the door yep. and steps into the octagon. The squared Can circle. I do a society check to try and figure out where this lexicon is coming from? Uh, sure. Uh, just just quickly, uh, I, I, because I stupidly removed the light um, instead of just deactivating it, um, it is back. Let's see, I just I just don't know how to put it back on the on the map. As Izori steps into the octagon room, Tulak shoots her a look. She's she's staying well back this time, like like inside the doors of the room at this Trekka point. Trekka approaches and sticks his hand into the light. No, I can start. <laughs> Wait, please, Krucka, no. And Tulak turns to Lump and says, lead the way. Uh, Freeman, would I know anything about this door to the north? You believe it just leads to one of the... Uh, uh, one of the hallways connecting to the, the sort of circular chamber okay. that I know about. Yep. Uh, so Lump will listen at the door to see if anybody is setting up an ambush on the other side. Uh, since we did trigger the alarm. And that's the eastern door. Sure. Yeah, you haven't uh, you haven't detected. Uh, you don't detect anything. You don't hear anything. Okay. Uh, I will push open the door. And okay. see another 10 by 20 foot hallway. Indeed. Uh, 15 feet long, in fact. 10 feet wide to another set of double doors. Two log follows. Uh, you give it a little listen and you don't really hear anything. All right. Push and open the door again. Stepping through. So you step through as two more double doors to the uh, west or to the east, sorry. Uh, and the hallway turns to the north and opens to a nice round circular oh. chamber. Oh. I, um, be- I see um, potential problems to the north. Here's the thing: is uh, your light only extends so far, so I'm not sure. Not sure, hundred percent sure if the vision's working correctly in Foundry. Yeah. However. If Krukka does step out, he's got dark vision and can see a good distance. Oh, yes. Um, and this place is basically... You can see... Everyone can kind of see a glowing something, a glowing, like, red aura way to the north, well past this circular room, down a northern hallway, into another open chamber. And that is reflecting some shadows, some silhouettes you can see. But Krukka can see quite clearly that there is a Barbazu with his back to you way up there. And there are six grothlets cool. all lined up in front of the Barbazu. And this would jar him enough to actually lower his voice enough to say, we best keep quiet. The Barbazu is a good 85 feet from you right now to the north. Tulak, avoiding notice, continues to the next set of double doors and just opens it. Okay. Yeah, Cracker kind of nods them. Open the eastern double doors. Steps in. You step into this room. Looks horrifying. Uh Very large room um, that uh, has fifteen transparent pillars that fill the center of it. It's a thirty-foot high room, and a bright light shines down in the center of each uh, of these little uh, pillars and chambers. A catwalk about 10 feet above the ground circles the entire room. So just to your north as it steps up, just to your south as well. Uh, And um, there's a handrail or banister along its edges. And the western side... uh, Oh, no, yeah, that's fine. A good number of these uh, transparent pillars seem to occupy... seem to be occupied by various creatures that are standing perfectly still. Uh, however, just to the to the north of you, um, 
and sort of so there's like three by five pillars so three across the north and then five from north to south uh, the northern west most one um, is not glowing um, and appears to have like been has, appears to have been like uh, fire damaged burnt but everyone all the other ones are glowing and you can also see that like the northern middle one is empty and the ones in front of you are filled with other creatures. I feel like we saw something like this in Starfinder. Not that I recall. Well, it's a museum. <laughs> or they're breeding them here. Is your last name Azori Jones? <laughs> last name is Azori Jones? Is Zori Azori Jones? <laughs> Indiana Jones, it belongs in a museum. <laughs> Never mind. Well, no, I got no, the reference. In, in I all, got the reference. I was just making fun of your question. <laughs> it, it looks like a museum. Oh, no, like no. These are pieces on display, are they not? Or in stasis of some kind. Well, we're seeing duplicates, at least in the artwork. No, no. Some of them, yes. This one and this one. This one looks like it may have exploded. Uh, you'll have to get a closer look on, on, on some of them. The one okay. immediately in front of you, though... Um, looks like this. Oh. Mmm. Neck mouth. Yummy. Uh, basically a, f- a four-armed uh, creature uh, that's all hairy and stuff, but the arm splits at the elbow as opposed to, like, having four separate full arms. Um, and instead of a head, it's just got this big mouth at the top uh, where its head should be. Um, and there are these, like, little eyes along uh, the edge of the mouth um, but yeah, it's just standing perfectly still. Is there anything I can roll to try to identify it? Uh, yeah, you could roll an occultism. Blind GM roll, go. Two lock will aid. Just roll your own. Fine. Two lock rolls his own. Thirty. Um, yeah, Lump's not sure, um, but Two lock knows that this is a gug. This is a gug. Uh, gugs are horrible creatures. <laughs> Very terrifying. Um, they uh, are just as I described. Um, they seem bestial, but they are actually very keen uh, and very intelligent. Uh, they usually lay very far underground. Uh, they usually they might come to the surface to hunt, uh, usually during dark nights, either alone or in small groups. Um, they uh, have a very voracious appetite um, and most consume the creatures they catch, but some actually instead kidnap their victims and retreat below the surface, leaving only a lingering stench and odd claw print, uh, paw prints. Yeah, they're about 16 feet tall. They weigh about 2,000 pounds. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> they have a very light step, and they have a, a very uh, odd ability. Um, they're able to squeeze through a, a space for a meat M creature, even though they are large, with incredible ease, because they have all these weird joints and stuff, so they can just like twist themselves through uh, holes that are usually a bit too small for them. Um, they're pretty vicious. Uh, they just basically attack with their claws, but they are very deadly. So Tulak behind him notices that on the same wall as the double doors that came in is another door. There is a single door there, yes. I'm worried that these cages can be unlocked somehow from a distance. Perhaps we should check this door to make sure that there's no one here that could spring a trap on us. Uh, Freeman, real quick. Mm -hmm. My uncanny awareness is letting me know there are things in that room. Oh, is it like... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, So when Tulak steps to the door, I have motion sense. Oh, you have like a... is Is it automated for you? Yeah. Oh, Foundry's automated it. That's really cool. <laughs> I see it too. It is really neat. I sent a That's screenshot really neat. to the to the chat. I, I I could see them when I was clicking your character, but I didn't realize that was just for your character. Yeah, man, Foundry's awesome. <laughs> it is. So as Tulak walks up to the door, Lump will just like quietly put a hand out, like not touching him because they know they're gross, and just be like, "Hold on mm-hmm. a second. There are others on the other side of the door." I don't know how to explain it, but I just know they're there. 
Is there anything you'd like to do to prepare before we go in? Tulak kind of looks at him quizzically. How do you know that? I, I, I don't know. The air currents or differences of pressure, I, I, I have no idea. It's, it's something that's been a part of me for a while now. All right, well, Tulak just grips on the uh, on the wand, and he's ready. Um, Izori will draw her wand of magic missile. Kirka, could you come here for a moment? Of course. Is, is it okay if I touch you? Of course. <laughs> yeah, it, a, a moment's hesitation before another, of course. Enjoy your heroism. So just as uh, you guys kind of are huddling together and getting yourselves kind of ready and in position, Izori, you notice the corner of your eye coming from behind you, this sort of green glowing tinge. And you slowly turn your head to look over your shoulder. And you know, like, when it's, it's like, really hot outside, you're looking down the highway in the distance, there's, like, that wavy heat in the air. Yeah, the mirage. You s- yeah, you see that, but with these, like, flecks of green glow to them. And just as you kind of position yourself a little bit more to, like, get a, get a better look at it, it suddenly materializes into this. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. (laughs) And this humanoid-looking green flame creature just pops out of nowhere. And I need you all to roll initiative. Tachyon Torch, what up? (laughs) Izori, free action, is going to use her swaggering initiative to draw her rapier and add plus two to her initiative. Which doesn't get automatically calculated for some reason. It's a circumstance bonus. So you have to kind of do that manually. Like it's a, it, yeah, it's a reaction. So it's not just going to apply unless you have an effect to add to your token. It's a free um, action. Uh, oh, it's got a trigger. It doesn't really matter. It's got a trigger. So like it's not, it's not going to automatically apply because it doesn't know when to apply it. You, cause you have to use it. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to add it into my, my initiative. All right. Um, let's get initiative. Um, who's up first? Azori, what'd you get? 19. Okay. And Tulak? 21. Trucka? Red hot. Natty one for a 13. <laughs> okay. Lump? Red hot. I rolled an 18 for a 34. Woo! Okie dokie, pretty damn good, but not good enough to beat this creature. Uh, And I need you all to roll me a will save. No. As this creature launches this cone of despair at you all. Kruk and I are stupefied, so we'd prefer not to. If that's yeah, right. gonna go ahead and sit this one out. <laughs> but hey, uh... mm, that's a too bad. That's gonna get too bad. Uh, Lump, what'd you get? I got a twelve for a twenty-eight. Okay, so you are uh, you've succeeded for one round. You cannot use reactions and must attempt another save at the start of your turn. Um, okay, yeah, that's it. Um, as like basically this morose feeling of despair kind of locks in on you. Uh, Let's see, who's next? Krukka? Uh, 10 on the die for a 22. Okay, uh, same deal, but uh, you can't use reactions for a minute. Oh man, I love reactions. So no reactions for for basically 10 rounds. Uh, Izori? 21. Same, same. And uh, Tulak? 18. Uh, same, same. And I just ah. realized you all left Flash Drum Door behind. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was there he is. Ask and I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> um, And also rolls an 18. Same, same. So 
Only uh, Lump is uh, for one round. Everyone else cannot use reactions for a minute. Okay. Okay. I don't and, like it. And uh, you don't like it. That's fine with me. And uh, so this big cone shoots out, and then this creature whips a hand forward and launches a uh, bolt of green flame at Azori. Um, that's going to be a 31 to hit. It's not a magic missile, is it? It's not. That's a crit. <laughs> that's a crit. Okay. Not looking good. Uh... You're going to take 34 points of damage, some of which is fire, some of which is negative. Uh, okay, so she's going to take 33 then. Okay, and I need you to roll me a will save. That's even worse. That's a 15. That's a 15. That is a critical failure. You, suddenly as this, as this hits you, uh, you start to become wreathed in green flames. Uh, and... Let's see. Let me just double check here. Uh, So these sickly green flames uh, uh, go all around you. You can no longer be um, concealed. And uh, should you go invisible, you would be concealed at best instead of undetected. Uh, And because you critically failed, uh, you uh, have a weakness of fire 10, which should be applied to your character right now. Yep. Uh, And this will last until it is removed. Okay. By By what means? You don't know right now. Lump, you're up. Holy water. Best guess. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Lump is going to look at this creature and just glare at it intimidatingly with a single eye. Okay. <laughs> and while while this thing was like casting this spell and like launching fire, it was just cackling. It was like... <laughs> That is a 33 to intimidate it. Uh, 33 against my will, DC. That is a success. Okay. Uh, Let me just double check. It's not immune for some reason. Uh, Looks like you're good. All right. And then I am going to cast Impending Doom. Okie dokie. I feel feel like we've covered this before. Yep. (laughs) You have come to the wrong place, creature. This will be your end. And I need a will save. Will save coming from me. Twenty-two, not great. That is a failure. Okay. Uh, what does that mean for me? Uh, the creature is immediately off guard. On the second round, it becomes frightened two. On the third round, it becomes stunned one. And at the end of the third round, the creature takes full damage, which will be sixty. Uh, okay. So off guard right now. Again, listeners, that's the new parlance for a flat-footed. Uh, so minus two to its AC. That's your turn. That is all three actions. Good start. Tulak, what do you got? Don't forget about your flat checks. Uh, does Glash need to... Um, oh, yeah, Glash initiative. needs to roll initiative. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, never mind, Tulak. It's Glash's turn. <laughs> all right. Stuck uh, in just before you. Glash will go ahead and move 15 feet here and attempt to splash it with acid. Okay. Uh, that is a three on the die for a 17. That's a big old miss. Right. Okay, now two luck. What do you got? Okay, I would like to roll a recall knowledge on this son of a bitch. Uh, that's going to be a occultism or religion. Okay, will you roll an occultism for me, please? Uh, indeed I will. Indeed I will. You... Uh, do not know. Hmm. Funny. Okay. So sorry. Um, Green, flaming, glowing, cackling creature. (laughs) It's a good laugh for you. Thank you. (laughs) Tulok will cast Guidance on Izori, and he takes off 20 feet to... Between two of these blue cages, uh, just to the south of the one he inspected originally, getting out of sight of the creature. Cool. So you, so technically, you can see through these. They're transparent pillars. This big creature is, yeah, stuck inside. Uh, it will, it, they're, they're basically transparent walls. So they grant a whole bunch of cover, but you're not out of sight per se. Okay. Um, uh, but they are like effective full cover if you need. 
And that's your turn. I want to throw guidance in the chat there. And yes. uh, Azori, you're up. Azori, with her first action, she will recall knowledge and use that guidance for it if I can. Okay. Uh, you also do not know. Okay. Next two actions. This The shadow below this firing creature begins to coalesce as she casts Malicious Shadow. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so it will make a strike. Uh, Real quick, didn't we need to roll will saves for reactions or something like that? Oh, shit, you did. You did. Well, I got a natural 20. Roll back. Shit, you did. Roll back, roll back, roll back the clock. Natural 20, you are good. Lump, uh, gonna roll, throw me one there, two lock, yep. Oh, fuck, and also, sorry, I need to roll a flat check for guidance. So okay. Uh, what'd you roll for the will save? 19. Uh, that's a fail, which makes you slowed one for your turn. So what if you want, we can just uh, hand wave guidance and let you move, or you can not move, and you can roll the flat check or guidance. I'm being pretty generous with that. Hand wave guidance. Okay. <laughs> guidance didn't happen. It didn't help anyway. Uh, and Azori, roll me one, please. 16. Okay, you are also slowed one. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, you only have two actions for this turn, which might have uh, informed your want to recall knowledge. I don't know. Yep, this it right. definitely would have. <laughs> um, she'll stride right up. Fuck it. She's getting right, right into the goods. Stride right up uh, and fuck it? <laughs> this is the worst album. <laughs> okay. Krucka. Would you say that this creature is incorporeal or would you require a recall knowledge for that? Uh, it's hard to say. It's it's like coalesced out of nothing and it seems to be made of completely of fire. Okay. Um, so, uh, but you you can't tell so well, far. Well, fuck this then. He is going to change his grip on the butchering axe, free action, draw the ghost touch whip, stride within or step within 10 feet and whip out a whip cracker. Okay. A whip cracker. A whip, a whip cracker. A whip cracker. <laughs> 26 to hit. Uh, that hits. So with the ghost touch whip, it was eight slashing. Okay, eight slashing damage. Uh, and you, it feels as though everything goes through. You, you kind of snap oh, this well, thing with your ghost well touch whip. Well saved for me, though, I suppose. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well saved. Damn. So bad at that shit. Uh, yeah, so that is a uh, failure as well. So you are slowed for this turn, uh, which means you just uh, get that. You get the free action. Uh, oh, draw and then move. I guess maybe you didn't get to attack. Yeah, uh, yeah I wouldn't get to attack. Brutes. Uh, this is rough. This is rough. Top of the order is going to be the... The uh, I almost revealed its name, although you might not know it already. It is going to uh, use its witch flame caress and just swing one of its hands towards Azori. Uh, that's another thirty-one to hit. Azori, you really shouldn't be in melee. <laughs> um, you take fifty-two points of damage. Um, Whoa, Azori, go down. Oh yeah, dying too. What the fuck? Not to mention the the additional 10 you would have taken from your weakness to fire. And then this creature is going to do, 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 um, vanish before your eyes as it casts invisibility. Fuck. ba That ain't good. Lump. I'm curious why I can't see. Oh, it's because it's a phantom. It doesn't make actual movement. I was like, why can't I see that? It's incorporeal. Oh. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. I have a pretty good idea of where it is. So I am going to stride over and just going to go ahead and bash it with my morning star as I envision in my arm mutates into the morning star. And that will be a four on the die for a 21 to hit. No dice, my friend. All right. And then last action, I will raise a shield. And let's see. I have one last action. Oh, my impending doom stuff happens. Uh, frightened. Oh, yes. Doom. 
Now frightened too. Okay. And still off guard. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just going to try again. Uh, real quick, would the 21 have made no. a difference with the Frightened? Okay. I would just uh, checked, yeah. A 16 will definitely miss, and that mm -hmm. is my turn. Oh, wait, no. Okay. I strode, raised the shield. Yep. Okay. And so on. Uh, Glass Drum Doer. We forgot to do the will save for him at the beginning of his turn, too, but it doesn't really matter. He didn't really do much. Roll me another one now. Okay, dokie. Uh, that's a natural one. Okay. Slowed one. Yep. Only has two actions. Uh, he's just gonna go ahead and. Oh god. Jeez. This Rory being there is problematic. Um. It's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Uh, it's going to cast Acid Splash to the square behind where the creature was, and just let the splash okay. damage do the work for him. Okay. Just try to get some points uh, on the board. Uh, 30. So it'll just be okay. splash one damage. All right. Splash one damage. Does that put me to dying three? No, no, no. I put it the square over here so that it would not do that. And that's his turn. Okay. And... Two luck. Things are looking dicey. Okay, let's roll that will save. Yes, please. Oh, fuck. 14. <laughs> We're rolling like garbage. Yeah, slowed one. And, like, you slowed one because basically, like, you were... You're filled, like, with despair. You're literally, like, tearing up as you're trying to, like, engage this thing. And, like, you, you feel, like, this overwhelming sadness. And you're all kind of, like, as it goes, you're kind of on the brink of tears. And you're eventually just going to be sobbing as you're fighting. It's exactly what I feel like every time I'm at your table, Barn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tulak will continue around the outside of this um, glass cage of emotions. And <laughs> I'm going to attempt to... I don't know what the word is for it, but I want to seek. Okay. To, to try to figure out where the creature is. Uh Lump is just going to, like, you see them swinging at this square right here. You know what? I take it back. Not going to move? Okay. Not going to move in that direction. Tulok is actually going to wheel around the other side and is going to hit Azori with the healer's gloves. All right. Good call. Maybe good call. How much healing? 17 points. 17 healing, okay. Zori starts awake, wounded one. And Krukka, roll me a well save. 16. So let me take... Slowed one, uh, slowed one yeah. Oh. Uh, he will stride to the east of Zori and strike with the whip. In, in that northwestern direction, I guess. Or does he have to do okay. like a seek to, or does he just flail? Sorry, you, are you just going to stride up and swing at that at that spot? Yeah. So you, you can you can swing at it. You basically just have a fifty percent miss chance. So you got to roll a flat check, uh, DC eleven. Also, I forgot to roll my flat check uh, for that healing. I just rolled it right now, and we're good to go. Okay. Eight on the flat check. So. Ah, he's swinging a miss. <laughs> Um, that's you, eh? Moving straight, uh, swing. Fine. So, this is awful. Uh, top of the order is Zori on her back, gasping for breath. Twenty-five for the will save. Uh, slowed one. Fail. Jesus. Okay, with her last two actions, she will cast dispel magic on uh, trying to get rid of that invisibility. Uh, okay. Um. So you get a roll, a uh, counteract check uh, versus my spell DC. Yep. <laughs> 18. Hero point. Uh, okay, hero point in that. Yeah, that was a pretty poor roll. Natural one. 
Ooh, <laughs> hate to see it, folks. Hate to see not, it. Not James' uh, last few fights. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm honestly at the point where it's okay if you kill Izori. I'll miss her, but I do not miss this build. <laughs> Yeah, listeners, you can't see James right now, but he's leaned back in his chair looking (laughs) frustrated. Very resigned. (laughs) Um, Yeah, not going to do it, of course. Um, uh, Next up, uh, the creature appears to the east of Krukka, launching another uh, bolt of uh, green flame at him. Uh, and that's going to be a uh, pretty shit. 21 to hit. Nope. Followed by a 28. Yep. Okay, so you're going to take 14 uh, damage, some of which is fire, some of which is negative. And as it cackles at you, <laughs> I need you to roll me another will save, please. Oh, I'm great at these. Uh, 25. Uh, 25 is a success. Um, you are... Uh, Wreathed in the same flame as Azori was, uh, but it's not quite as powerful. Um, and uh, it's going to only last for one round. Uh, and you have uh, weakness five to fire. Better not fly into a rage and like trip or something. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, that's its turn. Lump, you're up. Uh, Lump is going to stride. Uh, is this difficult terrain where the old case used to be? No, it, the case is still there. It's just like not glowing and covered in fire. So the wall is still all around it. Oh, okay, cool. And it's still uh, well, transparent. She's yeah. incorporeal, so I'm just going to stride through her. Uh, yep. <laughs> sure can. And uh, then I'm going to uh, attempt to trip it, bashing it. I think you can trip it. Does it look like it's flying? Oh, it's flying. Okay, never Definitely mind. Definitely flying. Never mind. Uh, and then <laughs> I will go ahead, raise the shield, and strike it with the Morning Star. And uh, that's a natural two for 19. I will go ahead and hero point that. It feels like a good time to. A 34 to hit? Uh, that is a crit. Hey. Okay. I do get the critical specialization because I am a war priest. And, nice. Uh, so you're hitting with the, the morning star. Yeah, one and done. Let's addition. go. Uh, I knocked the target away from me up to ten feet. Uh, I don't want to actually hit them any closer, so I'm just gonna <laughs> roll my critical damage for a twenty-four critical damage. Okay. And then that was three actions, so I'm done. Okay, and uh, even though you you crit it, it doesn't feel like all the damage goes through. Um. And Glass Drum Door will save. Yep. 32. Uh, good. Full yeah. full action turn. All right. Uh, is going to stride up behind Azori and then uh, apologizing to... Um, I'm Lump sorry. Is going to cast Acid Splash. You mean Glash, Glash is going to do Glash is Oh, pausing to Lump. Okay. Yeah. That was a really long, weird pause. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm playing two characters that are both cast. I'm sorry, over here. Lump. I'm sorry, Lump. <laughs> uh, that's a three on the die for a 17. Uh, not going to do it. I think it still does the splash, though. It still does a splash. Yeah, Lump takes a splash. Um, and this, uh, this creature doesn't appear to be affected by it. Okay. That's his turn. Um, Tulak. Jeez. This is tough. This is right. Yep. So I guess we'll start with a will save. 22. Uh, slowed two. Or slowed one, sorry. Two actions. Tulak is going to use the um, magic missile machine gun. <laughs> One of manifold missiles. <laughs> uh, that's right. Wait, sorry, uh, the impending doom. I think the mental damage. Goes oh, it should have ticked. Yeah, okay. should have ticked. Yeah. Uh, so sixty-six. For, God, thirteen points of damage. Oh, that's yep. a crap roll. 
13 points okay. of mental damage. 13 points of damage. Takes no damage. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, wait. Oh, hold on. Um, that's not true. You, I, can you... I need to... You roll that from the from the spell itself. Okay. Because you rolled untyped damage. So oh, okay. Gotcha. Go um, it, oh, there it is. Damage. <laughs> Much better roll with the 29. <laughs> 29? I'll take it. Never punished. Okay. There you go. Not all of it goes through, but a good, good hit yep. in. Okay, now what do you got to luck? And is it does that end uh, impending doom now? It does. Sorry. Yeah. So no longer flat-footed and frightened. Correct. Okay. I would like to clarify real quick um, with the wand of manifold missiles. So mm-hmm. essentially, I cast magic missile at the first level. Yep. And then after you cast a spell, an additional a, an additional missile or missiles are released from the wand at the start of each of your turns. As yeah. though you cast first action magic missile. Okay? Yeah. So if I... Because it says missile or missiles, that leads me to believe yeah. that... Yeah, so that's, if it was heightened, it would be missiles. Yeah. But it's not, right? Uh, you were saying okay. earlier before, yeah. Copy that. Uh, so it's a level one, so it's just going to be a missile at the start of, every, of your subsequent turns. Okay, so I'm going to use it... The wand itself I will use twice for two, two actions now. Oh, you're going to spend two actions now. Okay. Yeah, because it's just the yeah, standard right. spell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so two actions of the magic missile. That's going to be nine points of damage enacting okay. the manifold, and that is it for our turn. Bam, bam. Perfect. Uh, awesome. And uh, make a little note for yourself that those are going to keep going off. Krukka will save. Do I have to say this nat one <laughs> out loud? <laughs> I'd just be happy it does, it's not worse on the nat ones right now. Um, so still just slowed yeah, one? Yeah, you're just slowed two. Slowed two? Or slowed oh, okay, one, thank you. Slowed one, two actions. <laughs> okay. I keep mixing it up in my head. So this time, he, now that he knows what's going on, he will fly into the rage. Okay. Uh, he will do it without in uh, like going into the dragon instinct, so he will not be dealing fire damage like a smart cool. guy, and then he will strike out with... Like a smart guy. S- strike out with the ghost test. Yeah. Strike out with the ghost touch whip from where he's standing. Use, use your words, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why I bothered using those words, because it was a 22 to hit. Uh, that's a miss. Izori. It's a 30 on the will save. You're good. Three actions. Uh, she will stand with one action, and then two action, she will cast Phase Bolts. Okay. It's a 16 to hit. That's a miss. Okay. This creature is going to um, swing its witch, witch flame caress at Lump for a 38 to hit. That's oh, my <laughs> God. Bark. <laughs> oh, damn. That's a crit. Two crits. Yep. Uh, it's 26 damage. Fire and negative. Uh, sorry, that is not a crit. For some reason, my sturdy shield has oh. not been held the entire time, despite me saying it was. My AC is 29. <laughs> that is not a crit. Ooh. Nailed it. Um, okay. Uh, in that case, you're just going to take 13 then. Okay. Uh, but I need you to roll me a will save as these flames cling, try to cling to your body. Okay. Uh, that is a 18 on the die for a 34. That is a... Uh, success uh, so you are wreathed in flames and you have a weakness to fire five for one round all right um, oh it was also for one round for uh, Krukka right yeah earlier so that's that's now uh, removed um, okay and this thing is going to it is now it is actually now going to spend two actions and like raise its hands like Kaka! And you could see, you could feel the fire on you start to burn brighter and crackle louder. And I need you to roll me a fortitude save as this fire that is hasn't been doing damage to you starts to heat up all over your person. Okay. Uh, Lump just mean mugs the fuck out of her. I felt hotter in the flesh warping process than this. And rolls a natural twenty for a thirty-five. Whoa! Oh, nice. Get some lump. So basic save means no effect. (laughs) 
Oh, that is wicked. Okay. Um, and Lump, you're up. You total badass. <laughs> uh, Lump is going to, uh, for three actions, cast a heal in her face. And, uh, oh, wait. I have a thing. One second. One second. Cool. Okay. Uh, I am going to use a three action heal. So everyone, I need a basic fortitude save from her as well. Uh, okay. Do, do, do fortitude save 17, natural two. Okay. Uh, that is a failure. So she will take 24 points of positive damage. Bruka, uh, let me go ahead. Okay. 24 numbers. points. And yeah. you can, let me just check. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Okay. All, you can tell all that goes through. Okay. Uh, Krukka will also heal for 24. Uh, Zori will heal for 24. I don't know if Tulak will. Uh, oh, yeah. It's kind of a... I mean, Tulak's full anyway, so... Oh, okay. Then never It's mind. a bit moot, yeah. Okay. I'm down one. Ah, uh, I hate it here. You don't get it. You don't get it back. Screw you. I know. You meant Tulak's full uh, of it. We'll, t- we'll, talk, we'll talk if you die by one hit point, okay? <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> uh, so, uh... I also attempt to burn her, but I am assuming she's immune to fire. As my uh, you are dead, undead goes Indeed. off. Positive oh, energy okay. sets undead alight. When I use the heal spell to damage undead, <laughs> each undead that I'm takes amazed. damage also <laughs> takes persistent fire damage. Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't appear doesn't appear to affect it. Yes, <laughs> at least it doesn't heal it. Okay, that is all three of my actions. Okay, glass drum door will save. Uh, twenty eight. Twenty eight is a meat to beat, not slowed one. Woo. All right, that's your goal, there, friends. Slash is going to stride through his new friends and cast shocking grasp. <laughs> <laughs> Reach me out to touch base. All right, uh, off guard from flanking. Uh, that is a nine on the die for a twenty three touch. Uh, no, uh, I'm afraid not. Well. <laughs> Good effort. Good effort. I did my best. It's worth it's worth us uh, mentioning that Glashrador is uh, uh, well was oh did have the weak template, uh, but is only a level five creature normally. Okay. Uh, wait, is she wearing any metal? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tulak will save. Also, missile goes off. Yep. Uh, that is a twenty-two on the will save. That is a fail. You are slowed. You take five points of damage. All right. And Tulok would like to... Now, if you'll allow it, can I cast Telekinetic Projectile at this creature? I can see through... Yep. Okay. I'm going to give it that plus one of its AC because it's like behind a whole bunch of shit. 30 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Let's go. 21 points of bludgeoning damage as a tile comes down upon Ooh. Big one. Okay. Uh, bam. Hits it. Not all of it goes through, but you are you are starting to pick this thing down. Uh, Krukka, will save. Go. 22. Two actions. Fucking suck it, burn. Ghost touch whip. Cross. Uh, <laughs> flash from dirt. Uh, so is that lesser cover <laughs> yep. because he's a little gay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 31 to hit. Still hits. You're rolling good now. I believe gnomes are wee little guys. 11 points of ghost touchy slashiness. All right. Yep. Yeah. Good Good go. Izori. That was only one action. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Roll again there. Like. One more whip crucker. 16 does not do it. Uh, 16 does not do it, no. I gotta jump in here, and I don't want to do this, but I missed on my flat check for that magic missile. Duh. I rolled a yeah. 2, and I need to hit a 7. Undo that some of that damage. One? No, he, that was for his tele- telekinetic projectile. Oh, he said magic missile. That's what I was saying. Uh, well, shit. Yeah. Well, shit. Uh, okay, now it's Azori. 25 on the will save. Uh, yep, yeah, slowed. Wait, let me oh, let me double check. I'm dealing with two different DCs here. Uh, yeah, slowed. Phase bolt. Phase bolt, go. 23 to hit. No, I'm afraid. 
The struggle okay. is real. <laughs> um, I don't think I've rolled higher than a nine today. Yeah, <laughs> it's been real bad on your end. It's crazy. James like, pulls yeah, out a Game Boy. You've not done. You've not done anything that's not useful. It just hasn't had the impact that we need. Um, that's fun. <sighs> Working on my the back. way the cookie yeah. crumbles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> back up, <geez. laughs> uh, James is just streaming, building James a backup character right now, away. unbeknownst yeah. to us. On YouTube. Go <laughs> yeah. check it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so good. Just like, okay, so I've muted my mic again, guys. Uh, I'm, r- I'm ready to go over to the next step. <laughs> um, this hint, creature. It starts with R and rhymes with mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, Mastermind, geneticist. <laughs> this creature is going to. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and um, yeah, I'm going to cast a spell on on Lump. Mm. I need a will save, please. Uh, that is a 13 for a 29. Damn. Um, you take. 11 mental damage as this thing casts phantom pain on you. Uh, and then it swings a hand around to hit uh, Glastromdur with its witch flame caress for a 23 to hit. That hits. Glastromdur. Okay, thank you. Um, ooh, 19 damage for Glash. And I need a will save. Okay. Uh, that is a 7 for a 21. 21. Okay. Has failed. Is also kind of a light on fire and um, will be until it is removed. Okay. Just like Azori. And Lump, you're up. All right. Uh, Lump is... Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and cast Disrupt Undead. Oh. So I need a basic okay. fortitude. Basic fortitude. Uh, 25. Uh, 25 is a success. Okay. I mean, I'm unaffected or? Oh. It's a basic fortitude save, so you're going to take half. Oh, It'll right. Be yeah. 21. Uh, 10. And then I'm okay. going to bash you with my beating stick. Okay. At no man. Uh, 28 to hit off the guard. That hits uh, 16 points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Uh, okay. Now, I'm quite sure I, I missed this at some point, but for the most part, I haven't. It does have an attack opportunity when uh, hit with a melee strike. I chose not to use it earlier when it was um, invisible, but I actually don't think you hit it anyway. So, a creature makes a melee strike. Uh, so, it didn't have to hit. It chose not to, so it didn't want to reveal itself. But it is going to now swing at you for a 30 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, so 17 damage, and you also need to roll a will save again. Okay. Uh, that is a 4 for a 20. Okay. Failure. Uh, you, just like uh, Azori and Glash now, wreathed in flame, and um, uh, will not be removed until you uh, figure out how to do that. Okie dokie. Okay, that's you. That is all three actions. All right, it's Glash. We'll save. Uh, we'll save. Flashy. A 23. Two actions. All right. Um, he's just going to get out of there. Uh, yeah, I think he's just going to get out of there because he doesn't have any more offensive spells, and I don't think ventriloquism is going to help much here. So. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, and then what do I have for skills? Uh, is there any knowledges that I could roll to know more about this? Uh, it's, it's occultism, occultism or religion. religion, yeah. Okay. Doesn't have any of that. Uh, we'll spend last action crying. <laughs> <laughs> Weeping uncontrollably. Um, all right. Tulak. All right. Um, Tulak is going to cast Blindness. Okie dokie. So, what? Flat check go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flat <laughs> check first. Let's go, baby. Oh, actually, f- first things first, shoot your missile off. Right. Five. Five damage. Okay. Passes the flat check. How about a will? Did I roll the will already? Uh, no, you didn't. 25. 25. 
uh, is uh, still no dice. So two actions. Okay. Uh, so the blindness. So please roll me a fortitude. You got your flat check? Yep. Okay. Uh, not great. 17. Ooh. You are blinded for one minute. Uh, okay, what level are you casting this at? Level three. Okay, so it has the incapacitation, which means I am more than double the spell level. Uh, so it's going to boost a degree of success. So you are blinded from... until your next turn begins. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Uh, we finally figured this one out. Blinded, okay, to the beginning of my next turn. So again, effectively off guard to all your attacks right now. Kruka, what do you got? Besides a will save. 18. Hey, look who has two okay, actions. Two cracks two of the whip. <laughs> First crack of the whip is a 27 to hit. Uh, that hits off guard. 10 slashing. Okay. Of the ghost touchy variety. Map minus 5. 26 to hit. That hits off guard. 11. Ghost touchy slashy. Oh man, very good, very good. Uh, How many hit points does this thing have? Zori! More than 21. <laughs> what you got? 21 for the will save. Two actions. To cast Warp Step on herself and move the full 40 feet. Okay. Okay, Warp Step. Uh, have, we brought, have you used this before? I think you did, didn't you? Uh, I don't know if I have. So I gain a five foot status bonus, making my uh, speed 20 feet. Okay. Or sorry, 30 feet. And then I stride twice, essentially. Okay. So you're just loop. You're moving like 40 feet to loop around and get to one, one side of this creature. Yep. Without blocking Krukka. Cool. Exactly. Uh, right. That's you. Uh, next up is the warden who is going to. Ooh. ooh. Uh, it's a witch fire warden, by the way. Uh, I keep avoiding it. It always slips out at some point. Who is now going to... No see. longer blind. Oh, yeah. It's no longer blind. Where Still, that was, that was actually clutch. You, both attacks hit because of that uh, for, for Krukka. Oh, I guess they were already flanking anyway, but still. Still good. Um, da, 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 Witch fire warden is going to redouble its efforts on you, Lump. Uh, roll me another basic fortitude save as the flames around you start crackling again. Mm. That's a 30. Okay, so uh, success, you're going to take half this. Uh, so you're going to take uh, uh, 18 damage. Okay. And it is going to take. Uh, it's going to take a swing at you after that mm. for a 35 to hit. That'll okay, hit. Okay, just a hit. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, you have 29, eh? 21 more points of damage. Uh, actually, make that uh, um, 26. 26. Yeah, because you have weakness yeah. five. Perfect. That was probably added on to the other one as well, eh? Yep. Okay. Lump. Uh, right. Lump. Just getting real tired of it. Do I three action again? Or do I just two action myself? I'm gonna three action it. We'll get some damage on the board here with it. Uh, so I need another basic fortitude save from it. A real bad roll. Okay, so you're doing a three action heal again? Yep. Okay. Uh, so three action heal bursts out, uh, and this wave of healing kind of ekes around the corner and hits Zori for how much healing? 18 points. As my shield glows. It is gonna reach Glass, so Glass also gets healed for that much. And. As you, uh, as it hits the uh, witch fire warden, uh, it just cackles. <laughs> it just bursts into uh, a bunch of like green embers uh, floating all over the place. You could hear that that echo of the of the cackle bounce between all these transparent pillars and all through this big hall, and and the, the sound of flames just kind of dies out into the silence here and you just are standing there some of you still aflame without any heat or damage and we'll figure what the hell that is next time so we're gonna call it there (laughs) 
Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vaults and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at unchartednorth.ca, patreon.com slash unchartednorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in.